everyone welcome to rural water resource management nptel course this is week 5 lecture 2 last week we have been looking at groundwater hydrology and groundwater components the stress is more on groundwater in this weeks because we understand that for rural water resources groundwater is a key resource and it is very important especially now to conserve it so let's go into the lecture for this today in the past lecture we looked at porosity we defined porosity we defined spatio temporal variations how it can be estimated in today's lecture we would look at specific yield it is defined as the ratio of the volume that drops from a saturated rock due to gravity to the total volume of the rock so let's visualize it to see how we can understand it better so we have a uh, material a soil uh, material where we want to understand the groundwater structure which is this big e and h1 is the initial water saturated layer or the water table and after some time the water table falls down to h2 and that is because of gravity so you have a saturated layer and after gravity so gravity is working on the layer so you water level will drop down okay q is the volume of the water which has been discharged because of gravity to reach to h2 the new level or the new stable level so specific yield is defined as q the volume of the water that has been drained due to gravity by the volume of the rock which is h1 minus h2 by the cross section you have to understand that all the rock is wet but unsaturated above the water table and this takes a long time because gravity acts very slow and it has to overcome the sediment or the attraction of uh, the rock material on water there are different names given specific yields Age and drainable porosity, all are the same. Okay, so different papers would uh, label it differently, and it depends on how they would like to term it. So, like specific storage is the remaining water that is in the, in the soil profile, and drainable porosity, which is drainable because of gravity, is given. Okay, so specific yield is the same, and there are different names given. Let's look at a specific yield in a gravel. Gravel is big, big stones uh, with less sediment in it, and uh, the porosity space is also large. So, if you have large volume of water coming, the volume of water discharging because of gravity is also fine sand would have a moderate drainage, moderate specific yield because some water would be stored in the water spaces. because of the interactions between the sediment whereas clay have very high potential to hold on to water and uh, given the same water apply to all gravel fine sand and clay or solid rock uh, the specific yield is very very low uh, because of the slow or no drainage in some regions the clay layer is termed to be an impervious layer which means it stops the water from going through it so uh, it is kind of an impervious layer because water gets absorbed in the clay and it actually prevents it from moving further down which is where gravity acts and pulls down the water so specific yield is a very important term uh, to understand the nature of your aquifer to discharge water readily if it is very slow then the groundwater potential is also very less Let's look at another figure uh, where A is your volume uh, of rock saturated with water, so full of water is now. Now gravity is acting on it. So you've watered the field. Uh, you have a saturated uh, layer, and uh, now gravity is pulling water down. Okay. After gravity drainage, one unit volume of the rock has been dewatered. 
corresponding level of the saturation. So we have lowered the level of the saturation by taking out one unit of water due to gravity. Specifically, it is the ratio of the volume of the water that drain from the rock owing to gravity to the total rock volume. Okay. So now Q is the unit that has come out due to gravity and that divided by the total rock volume gives you the specific yield. Another important parameter is specific retention or SR of a rock or soil and it is defined as the ratio of the volume of water a rock can retain against gravity. So this is kind of opposite to your specific yield. Okay. So how much water can be retained uh, against gravity? Specifically in this with gravity, how much volume can come out? That is the ratio you take over the total volume. Uh, whereas here, it is the water that is retained in the rock to the total volume of the rock. Since the specific yield represents the volume of the water that a rock will yield by gravity drainage with specific retention, the remainder, the sum of the total is equal to porosity, which is n is equals to sy plus sr. So let's think about it. n is your volume of void by the total volume of the solid, right? So we have bv by vt, whereas sy is your volume of water that has been dewatered that has been come out of the system uh, by your total volume of the solid and whereas the so specific retention is the water remaining in the profile by the total volume of the rock right so it is actually the sum so if you sum both sy and sr it gives you the porosity because it is a totally saturated system and which means there's no air, only all the volume of the voids are filled with water. And in specific case, some water is released due to gravity and in specific retention, the remaining water is held down. Okay. So the total water is now combined together as porosity. Let's look at a graph to better understand the relation between porosity, specific heat. So you have total porosity as n, which is the summation of specific yield and specific retention. Okay. n is equal to sr plus sy, uh, and we have the grain size of your soil profile, rock profile here, clay, silt, sand, gravel, pebbles. Percentage along this order, okay. porosity or specific yield or specific retention. So what you see here is in a well sorted aquifer, which means it is sorted almost same size. There is high porosity in clay, silt, but when it comes to sand, which is very small, it comes down. Okay, so you have lesser and lesser uh, porosity uh, or, or percentage when it comes down. Specific uh, tension. The total porosity is almost sixty percent to thirty percent, so it is also coming down. But your specific retention comes down very fast in gravels and cobbles because the gravels and cobbles cannot retain that much water. It may have a high porosity, okay, but all the water would fall down due to gravity. And that we saw in the earlier slide we discussed about specific yield. So in clay, the specific yield is very less, not a lot of water comes out. Uh, in silt, as the size of the grain increases, you have more water easily available for gravity and it is it is well sorted aquifer. Uh, you have a very high amount of uh, specific yield, but normally well sorted aquifers are not available. So you have a specific yield tapering off uh, in sand, gravel and cobbles. So the worst is the clay. For specific yield, gravity cannot pull down water, whereas gravel and cobbles, it is easier to pull down, whereas sand, it is much more easier. So when you play in the beach, uh, you see you dig a sand castle or you can see water coming on the shore of the sand. Okay, And after the wave goes back, you could see that the water just flushes down. Okay, So it quickly comes down because of gravity. And that is why, because the specific yield is very high in sands. So how much water is retained? It is the opposite. 
right? So specific retention, if we look at in clay, it is very high. Whatever water the clay has, it will not let it go. It will hold on to it tight and long. And it's the same procedure for, for plant available water also. So it doesn't mean that, okay, clay soils are good for plants. No, because if gravity cannot pull, the same pull might be exerted by the plants. Only some plants with higher pulling capacity can grow in clay soils. The good part is clay can fight gravity for you and keep the water up, but the force to take the water should also be high for plants. So only some plants can grow, like for example, cotton uh, grows well in uh, clay soils. So the specific retention is very high and then it slowly comes down, slowly comes down as your size increases, okay? So clay, silt will have a high retention, but when it comes to sand, the water just flushes through. Gravel, it doesn't stay. Bubbles, it doesn't stay. The specific yield is very high in these uh, higher grain size materials, uh, and that is why your specific retention is also very small. It's the opposite, right? So in a well-sorted aquifer, when it is fully sorted, it just goes to zero. The specific retention goes to zero, which means all the water is drained out. So this graph clearly explains the relationship between your specific yield and specific retention and the total porosity. We've also discussed the specifics of when these uh, specific yield can be high and specific retention can be high. Think about a cricket pitch or a golf course. Uh, you don't want water to stay there, right? When there's a rain, you don't want water to stay there. So what material will they use? They would use a material with high specific yield. For example, you have sand, gravel, and cobbles under the course, under the, the golf course, or under the pitch, so that when water falls, quickly it goes down, and then through the gravity, you can extract the water out. So only on the grass surface, there are some water which they use some techniques to remove it. But in a rural setting, it's the opposite, right? You don't want water to flush down uh, totally due to gravity. You want water to stay as long as possible so that your plants can survive. So in that perspective, your retention is high in silt, which is your um, combination uh, of sand, silt, and clay, uh, good loamy soil. Uh, is good for plant growth. Okay, silt are fine size uh, sand, uh, but uh, clay is much, much finer, so much, much attraction uh, on the water particles. And sand, again, as you move up in grain size, you would lose more water uh, to gravity, so specifically the side, but the retention is very, very low. So somewhere you need to balance it up. If you want good groundwater potential, you would go to gravels and cobbles. Think about where you would use it in a rainwater harvesting structure, for example. Most of us have rainwater harvesting structures. What would they do? They would have gravels, cobbles, sand, so that water can flush fast into the ground uh, and sand and silt can act as a filtering material, right? And then it goes to the groundwater aquifers. Uh, so it is very important to have such a strata to capture the water and also quick specific yield so that water drains so that more water can be put in. If you have a clay soil, uh, then you cannot have a rainwater harvesting. You'll have to put in gravels and cobbles to put push water faster into the groundwater aquifer. So these are uh, how you could visualize the porosity concept in your rural water management, urban water management, and especially for groundwater management. Moving on, uh, let's look at a particular field sites uh, sample, a uh, specific yield of sediments taken from the Humboldt River Valley of Nevada uh, from the book uh, as a function of the median grain size. Okay, So what we could see here is uh, the specific yield is very, very low for clay. Okay, And uh, it starts to increase as the size of the grain increases. So it, it starts to increase the silt, very fine sand, and then medium sand, coarse sand, almost the same. Uh, and then it comes down, very coarse sand, very fine gravel, 
gravel okay, specifically it comes down so the best uh, to drain the water would be sandy uh, material sandy uh, soils uh, but then if you have gravel in between then you can arrest the water but the worst is clay so clay is almost at zero so please understand that specifically is uh, differs at a different region okay and that's why there, there's always a range um, and most importantly specific yield is acted upon gravity the other thing that can also induce specific yield is when you have a cone of depression right so uh, we've talked about cone of depression in our groundwater class when you pump too much then then you uh, you artificially induce water to go through your and that can also push water because of specific yield that can also push water to uh, bring down the level of the water table so that is how we estimate specific yield right we have a water table and the water table comes down uh, and how much water is dewatered you take it out and uh, put a ratio uh, to the volume of the rock or the material moving on let's look at uh, some ranges uh, it is always a range uh, it is not one value so i am using multiple sources you could see i will use freeze and cherry's book which is uh, mostly trusted for these values uh, i have also used uh, some case studies and other books uh, from india also to to look at the variations in uh, the values okay so specific yield clay can have a maximum of 5 minimum 0 and an average of 2 so uh, most probably as i said you can take the max min and then take an average uh, to get at where it stands okay and most probably it will be on the higher end uh, but sometimes you'll just strike it in between okay so uh, coming back the average is normally used in a lot of literature uh, and uh, clay has a good range from um, 0 to 5 sandy Clay twelve to three, the range you can see it expanding. Uh, silt uh, can have nineteen to three, uh, fine sand twenty ten, medium sand thirty two to fifteen, and so on. I won't be reading all these values, right? Uh, but uh, for coarse gravel, it is twenty six to twelve. So what do you understand is there is some difference, some range uh, it is created. Why is there a range? Let's pause for a second and think. why such materials will have a range and not one value because the climate and the use of the land is not the same across let's visualize we have a clay field okay i might have a tractor so i have tilled the land it is clay but i have tilled the land i have done a lot of um, uh, work to stabilize the soil on the sides uh, and also i have put in plants where it can infiltrate uh, deeper into the clay i've i've picked specific plants so what happens is through the pathways through these pathways the porosity has increased and specific yield is a function of porosity so you can have clay but you can do things to increase the porosity you can do management to increase the specific yield okay so water can go in so if you have more pore spaces water can go in yes clay falls on to the water but if there is excess uh, porosity or excess pore space water gets stored and flushes out due to gravity remember uh, since it is very small the size of the grain is very small i'm going back to this uh, slide uh, the size here you have it very small which means it has more surface area to attract water Okay, there are many many clay particles. The volume is the same. If you take one uh, kilogram of clay, silt, sand, gravel, the volume is the same, or the the the, the, a, the area or the mass is the same, but this the surface area of connection to the water is much much bigger in clay, silt, and sand, because the size is small. So you have a circumference. and you have a more surface area in connection with the water so now how do you overcome it by increasing the porosity so by increasing the porosity what you do is you 
create more uh, void space for the water or air to come in. And right now we're talking about specific yield. So I'm going to saturate the soil by putting, applying full water and water can be easily drained. It, compared to a non uh, agricultural irrigated land or a non uh, agricultural managed land. Okay, So tilling uh, is one thing that can introduce porosity into your uh, soil and rock materials. Um, and you have a mixing of uh, various aspects in clay when you till. So that is one thing uh, that we can do. Uh, but the more natural thing is to let uh, the vegetation take care of porosity. So if you have a good tree cover, if you have good uh, vegetation, native vegetation with deep roots that can go in and break the soil structure, uh, then you have more porosity. Okay, so porosity is uh, an aspect that can be changed. Suppose I have clay, I put on one side, I put crops. So you have root zones developing and more porosity. On the other side, I have clay and I'm putting a road on top of it. Okay, how do you put a road? You put gravels, etc. But then you put a tar and then you have a road roller which goes on, which means you're compacting the surface. So when you compact, you have already clay with very less pore spaces. When you compact, it gets more pushed. Okay, The weight of the soil material or clay material doesn't change. The weight is the same, but the volume has changed. You have pushed it down. Same thing, you can take an experiment at home. You can take a beaker. You can take a soil, uh, break it down, and then uh, shake it and put it in a container. You would see the volume is high. Okay. Now take half of the volume of that container and put it in another equal container. You have equal volumes. In, in the other one, you can push it just by some force. You can push it and you can see that the soil material would come down. This is the same thing which would happen in a field. If you compact it too much, it could be compaction by tractors, it could be compaction by people walking on it, or even grazing of animals. Then you compact the soil, which means your porosity is reduced, so no more water can go in, and your drainable porosity, your specific aid, all of these components come down. So land management is related to these key parameters of porosity, specific yield, specific retention, uh, as much as your water availability. So when we say rural water management issues, it is not just that I'm not getting water from rainfall, climate change is happening, monsoons are uh, shifting, or I'm having a flood or a drought. It also includes how you manage your land. How well are you managing your land? Are you having the correct species of plants and trees to increase the porosity, to increase the water retention uh, in your soil. Okay, And if you overdo it by non-native species, what happens? All the water is taken out. And then your clay cracks. Okay, So clay is a very, very tough uh, soil system to work with uh, compared to the other things. So a loam is a combination of sand, silt, and clay. We will not get into soil structures a uh, lot because this course would be on uh, water, water management uh, with some more specifics of the groundwater. Okay. So always there is a range, understand there is a range because of hydroclimatic changes, because of the size of the clay also. Clay doesn't have one size, it is a range. So depending on what clay size you have, you have a specific yield. But most important, depending on how the land is used you have a difference in specific E. So this understanding would help us better understand the, the, the ranges uh, and also better understand how we can conserve groundwater. Thank you. We will see in the next class. Thanks.